Hi, I'm Craig Phillips, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to build your own brick barbecue. The tools and the materials you'll need is a barbecue kit, bricks, shovel, brick trowel, brick hammer, point and trowels, tape measure, gloves and goggles, knee pads, spirit levels, and sand and cement. Now it's important when choosing the style of brick that you're going to use for your barbecue because of course they must be able to perform for the heat of a barbecue. So when you do purchase them, make sure they have a grade A engineering brick or a fire line brick. Now the first stage is to set the area of your barbecue out whilst it's dry. Place your grid into the centre and start to lay the bricks out around, leaving about a 10 or 15 millimetre gap between the grid and the brick and each brick that you're laying out. Once you're happy that it all fits in, take your pencil, start to mark up where it's going to sit, and then you're ready to start doing your mix. Now we're ready to start laying the first course of bricks. As you can see, I'm laying these directly on top of these concrete slabs. We already know we've got a concrete base underneath here suitable to take the weight of the barbecue. If you're going to be building this onto soft earth, you're going to have to dig yourself out a strip foundation, lay some concrete, let it dry, so that's sufficient to take the weight of your barbecue. Now with your brick trowel, you want to create a little small roll of mortar. So you keep turning it over with your trowel until you get that shape. And then you can place it over your marked area. To get your first bed into position. Placing the first brick directly onto your mortar bed, pressing it down just gently and you'll see the mortar will start to ooze out of the sides here. Get yourself your small spirit level, double check that it's sitting level and then you can get your second brick. You're going to have to replace some mortar on the end of this one. Once you've applied it onto the side, wipe it off with your trowel and then pass it down a fraction. And then you can bed that onto the second one. Again, taking your spirit level And then continue to lay your mortar onto the slab, just pressing it down with the front of the trowel to create a little small gap in there. And then your back course is going to be butt up to it here. So what you need to do is either put some cement on this side of the brick or on the edges of this one. Sometimes it's a little bit easier to put it on the edge of that one that's in position. Again, keep checking with your spirit level that you're making sure this first course is perfectly level. You might find that your sub base isn't completely accurate. If it's not, you just have to compensate that with the first bed of mortar. Now that's your first course complete. Make sure you scrape off any excess mortar. Just check with your grid that it fits in the centre and you've got that 15 millimetre gap all the way around the outside. Double check it's level right across and you're ready to start laying the second course. The first brick of the second course needs to straddle across the bottom layer by 50% to create that brickwork effect. So again we lay a second bed of mortar on top of the brick. What we're trying to create is to get an equal amount of mortar across the top course of the brick. That's probably about 20, 25 millimetres deep. We take our brick, we straddle it across, 50% on each of them, and we 
gently tap it down. Until we've got between a 10 and a 15 millimeter bed of mortar between bricks. If we're happy with that, we get our small spirit level and we double check that we've got this level on both sides. Our next brick, we butter the edge of it up like we did with the first course. Again, trying to get an equal amount of mortar on the brick, and we place that into position, gently tapping it down and cutting off any excess mortar that oozes out. Now we've got the two courses in position. We can also put the spirit level upright against the sides to check that we're nice and plumb. Now again, when we come to this corner, we could butter the brick up onto the one side and push it against it, or we can always put it onto the edge of the brick there, which sometimes is a little bit easier when we come to these corners. Now with the second course starting to straddle over the first course, it leaves us with two halves on the ends which have to be cut. Real simple to do it, there's a couple of ways. One is with a brick hammer. Simply start to gently tap the brick where you'd like it to break, which of course is in the middle of this one. Once you start to see the brick fracture, a fraction, you can start to hit it a little bit harder and it'll break into two. What you must do is when you're laying these on, butter up the broken edge of the brick and make sure that's bedded into the face of that brick. So we've got the cleaner manufactured edge showing on the corner. Now drying time is very important whenever you're doing any brickwork. I've done four courses here, leave it for about an hour or so to start drying out before you put any more courses on. Always double check that it's not too wet along the bottom because the weight of course will make it want to spread out. Now once you've got so many courses on and it's starting to go off a little bit, it's time to start pointing. You can see at the moment the mortar in between here is a little bit uneven because we're just bedding the bricks on and we're trimming it off. If you've got any small areas where there's gaps in there, start off if you point yourself just get a small amount on and then start to fill them in as best as possible. You're always trying to keep the brick clean, of course. When you get it in, you don't have to worry about being too neat at the moment. It's just about filling in any of the gaps. And then once you've more or less filled in the gaps in there, you can then start to point them up two different ways. You can use a weather struck point in which you get your points and trowel and then you start to just press in the mortar, creating a nice smooth line and you're kind of cutting off any excess mortar that hangs over the brick and you're creating a nice smooth area so it can be waterproof with the weather. You leave that to dry for a little bit longer and then you get your soft brush and wipe it off and it kind of break off any of these little edges and also clean the brick at the same time. Alternative, you can have a pointing bar like this where you can get a thing called a bucket handle pointing. Where the bucket handle pointing is, you use the edge of that to literally push the mortar in and it's creating more of a deeper pair to the edge of the brick. And again, it's making it nice and smooth so of course it's waterproof for any driving rain that should come in on it. applying quite a fair bit of pressure on the pointing bar you're kind of scraping off any excess mortar that's gone on the edges of the brick and you're just creating a nice little weather proof 
barrier. Now I've done the points and I've left it to dry off for another 10 minutes or so. Just get myself a brush and then I'll just start to brush over the face of it before it completely dries. Now as you can see, I've started to lay the eighth course up, but over this side, I've stepped these three bricks out and that's going to take the weight of the charcoal grid, which of course will sit on here and we'll do the same again that side. So we lay the mortar exactly as we have done on all the other courses, but this time we place the first brick staggering over the brickwork so it's standing out proud on both sides. I lay down its position across that joint and then my next course of brick, I'm going to butter up one side of it there. And then I'm going to apply that brick to this side here. And I'm leaving the space for about a quarter of a brick there and then the opposite end of it will be a three quarter brick which will sit into here but we need to lay three of these out and so just bridge it across to make sure we're They're perfectly level on that side now. And then we lay the third one along here. That way by buttering up one side of the brick and pressing it against that centre one and the same again on here, the mortar's going to hold them nice and solid in between. Now that's the last brick on the ninth course and it's a standard stretcher course the same as all the rest of the ones below and it's sitting directly on top of these bricks that are stepping out that hold the charcoal grid in position now the next course is the tenth course which again it's going to be stepping out on both sides and this will be holding the cooking grill in position which will be at this level Now that's the last brick laid on the top course, double check that it's all level. A couple of things that you must remember whenever you're doing any form of brickwork on a barbecue like this, pick the right bricks first of all. Setting out is important because the first course dictates where the rest of them are going to go. When you're mixing your sand and cement, of course get the ratio right. In between each course of brickwork, the bed that you lay of cement must be more or less the same size. And then of course the perps in between must be vertical and level. And there's your barbecue complete. And of course, you can put some quarry tiles along the top just to finish it off. 